Texas was the best decision that we ever made. Coming out here, everybody's so rad and like, I mean, look at, look what's going on. good transition from skating the street to riding bikes and you get nomadic, go across the country, worked out. I rode my buddy uh, Joey Cano's 1960 Panhead one night. From there on, I was completely hooked. Daryl Borba, I'm out of Magnolia, Texas. I uh, brought 49 Panhead, built it for Born Free 12, and a 46 Knucklehead. The Knuckle, I worked very hard to get the Knucklehead. I traded a Sportster Chopper and a 52 Pan, both running riding bikes and a pocket full of cash for the Knucklehead. It was a little different when I got it and I took the front end off, ditched the pipes, ditched the gas tank, and then, you know, kind of did my thing to it. And it's been fun. Did 180 miles from Houston to come out here and didn't skip a beat. Great bike. Love the knucklehead. <laughs> the panhead, I ride around a little bit here and there, but it stays as nice as I can keep it. But I still ride it. <laughs> Bought a running bike. Sold everything but the motor and the frame. Uh, built, built the front end, built all the pipes, did all the fabrication. I actually did all the body work on it as well. And then Scott Chemical Candy painted it for me. So I didn't want the light on the sissy bar. So I was like, where am I gonna put this light? Oh, right there. And cut it off and welded it on. I was like, that's it, that's where it's gonna stay. <laughs> Originally from California, came out a few years ago, but when I came out, I didn't have any connections with anybody, you know? I didn't have a chromer, a polisher, all that kind of stuff that I had at home, so a lot of the stuff I did myself, aluminum, stainless stuff, polished it all myself. And then I actually shipped a bunch of chrome to California to get done. So like, not having the parts guy that I was used to going to and stuff like that, you know? so. It was a challenge, and then I did all the body work myself. And I had never done that amount of body work, so it, I probably have like 100 hours in sanding on that motorcycle. But I learned a whole lot, so that was cool. Started working for a guy that was building bikes and had grew up in a shop. My dad built hot rods and stuff like that and just fell in love with motorcycles and welding and building stuff and just that's where it went. I'm a TIG welder by trade, and I did sanitary stainless piping for like food grade stuff. And got a, got a phone call that there was a job at a prison welding stainless, teaching inmates how to weld. So I took the job. It was only a nine month thing. So the nine months was up, and the guy that got me on there called, was like, hey, you want to build jails? I was like, let's go. So built jails for about five or six years, then moved to Houston, and I ran the uh, maintenance program for all the, the jails there. And then just recently quit that, and I'm on my own. Uh, just a welding shop, general welding, I'll, fabrication welding, you know. Bikes, I'm trying to keep fun. You know, I feel like if I do it for a living, it's not gonna be fun anymore. It's been good, I'm busy, man, very busy. Didn't think that was gonna happen, but now I have more work than I can shake a stick at. Texas was the best decision that we ever made. Coming out here, everybody's so rad and like, I mean, look at, look what's going on, you know? Daryl Borba, I'm from Magnolia, Texas. Uh, Instagram's Dirty Misfit and Borba's Specialty Welding.
My name's Jason Ochoa, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, and I brought a uh, 1949 Panhead that I built for Born Free 13, and then I brought uh, Purple Haze, which is a 55 Panhead. People's Champ 7, uh, I, I was picked uh, for the top 25. Um, didn't make the six, but I, did, I still finished the bike, took it to Born Free, and I got a lot of attention there. Um, that bike was built uh, kind of in honor of my dad. He loved uh, Jimi Jimmy Hendrix, so built a bike kind of in his honor. And I eventually wanted to give it to him, but he passed away a couple years ago. So, but he did get to see the bike and uh, really appreciated it. So that's kind of my, my tribute to him. And as long as I'm alive, I'll never get rid of it because of my father. Yeah. It was one of my, uh, the first ground up build I ever did. Rick Bray from RKB Customs, good friend of mine. Uh, I talked to him about a, a girder front end and I kind of built the bike around that uh, front end. So we did a super narrow four over. Uh, the frame is a 57 straight leg. It was pretty bad shape. So we uh, straightened everything out, got everything going, uh, did some light molding on it. For the most part, it's a pretty simple bike, but uh, it still has that kind of a really nice, kind of low 60 style, which I was going for. I actually taught myself how to TIG weld on that bike. Bought a, uh, a nice little Miller TIG welder and kind of just practiced, and, uh, and that was the biggest challenge. I mean, I'm not an everyday welder, so you know it's uh, kind of a hit and miss on, some, on certain days. And, I'm pretty good at messing stuff up, but I just kind of keep going until I get it right. And I built a 49 Panhead. Um, it's a shovel head frame to convert it and did some, uh, a lot of modifications to the frame. I wanted to do um, a lot of engraving, a lot of details. So that was kind of what I wanted to push for for Born Free 13. A guy out of uh, Dallas, Texas named Gilbert Cortez, he did all the engraving for me. He's, he did some engraving on Purple Haze as well. So I've known him for many years and I told him I wanted to go all out and he was, you know, he's kind of, pushed me to do the entire uh, hoops on the on that bike. Uh, he's like, let's just engrave the whole wheel. I was like, well, I, it's kind of a lot, isn't it? And he goes, take you a while. And he's like, no, I want to do it. I had a friend of mine, he actually uh, machined the ribs in for me and, and sent me pieces. And then I welded them in, pushed them out to the side of the bike. And, and I wanted them kind of long. They were actually longer than they are now, but I cut them down. So both my Born Free bikes were painted by uh, Scott Hoker, Chemical Candy Customs good friend of mine we've always come up with like different schemes and what we wanted to paint or what I wanted and he just makes it happen um, this one was challenging because we were trying to tie something in with the engraving we tried a couple of different things and I really didn't like it he didn't like it so um, this was the, the, the last uh, decision we made was to do the flames with the he did it's really cool like I don't even know how it looks like almost like lava on top of the tank and then tied that into everything so I'm pretty happy with that as well I've always been into bikes. I uh, had um, a little dirt bike when I was six years old. Yeah, I grew up on a ranch, so I was always kind of, you know, run around on that thing. And then my dad was into shovel heads. Started small, you know, just converting, cutting, chopping, and then eventually got into like doing metal work and uh, building bikes. So i um, been doing it for about 11 years now. And I don't fabricate every day. You know, it's kind of a weekend hobby thing for me. I was sitting on Instagram one day, kind of, you know, just flipping through and I got a I got a message from Mike um, I was asking if I had anything in the works and then at that point I was like why is he contacting me like I mean the thought came into my head but there's I was like no way no way and um, he's like well how would you feel about building bike for born free I said are you serious and he's like totally serious so I was like in and uh, it just kind of snowballed so it was a pretty cool experience and still it still amazes me today that I was even you know, invited the first time and then to be invited two years in a row was pretty cool. So my name is Jason Ochoa, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm on Instagram. Um, it's uh, motopsycho73 and uh, fourspeedmayhem at gmail.com is my email. How's it going, man? Uh, I don't know if you've ever used uh, clamp on handlebar mounts before, but those things rattle and you might lose your phone on the highway. This thing's magnetic right here. Just place that baby right there and you can get to your chopper show in East Texas with no problem at all. Josh Trevino out of Austin, Texas did the paint work for me and everything, knocked it out the park. Nicole Andrzejewskis, Chicken and a Biscuit on Instagram. She did uh, the paint on my tank. Really love bison and we go to Sturgis every year and obviously they have uh, bison there in Custer State Park. Nicole also does like really cool snakes, kind of married. Kansas and South Dakota together. When I built the bike, I was at Texas Harley Davidson, and we had a painter up there, Chris Fraser. I was born in January, so my uh, first stone is garnet, so I wanted to go red. You know, I told him I wanted like panel stuff, chopper kind of stuff, flake. I got fish scales underneath and lace on the top. 
I got sleepy on here, because people used to call me that. My name is Jacob Kennard, I'm from Austin, Texas, and I brought a uh, 1972 shovel head that I built for uh, Born Free California. The motor is about the most normal thing about it, I guess. It's a, uh, in a single down tube frame that I built. It's like a narrow, tall, tough guy style bike, high Frisco mids, you know, Frisco Sportster tank, um, flame paint job, you know, all the cool shit. I kind of nerd out on a lot of fabrication related things. so. There's parts that like, I used like a cast neck and cast, cast axle plates. So I fabricated all the motor mounts and everything to also look cast. So there's like a little metal magic of blending everything together so you can't tell what's what. It looks like there's a lot more time in, in, into it than it really is kind of, but it's still a lot. It's only the third bike I built. Um, and I kind of winged the first two and I learned my lesson. And so this time I used a lot of like CAD related 3D software to, cause I made my own fork lowers and stuff like that. So to kind of be able to figure out fork seals and travel, you know, it helped a lot. I'll snap a photo of it on my iPad and do an overlay and draw over it for an idea, like exhaust or anything. You know, I can clip it, scale it, drag things around. And then when I get it right, I just build to that. So it's cool kind of bringing technology into it. Like not everything has to be done super crusty with an angle grinder in a garage anymore. Like. We have options. I spent 15 years doing custom fabrication for theme parks and museums. So real fine, up close, interactive exhibits and stuff like that. Um, and then I've only been in motorcycles for maybe like four years tops. It seemed to lend itself really well too because it was all the fine finish engineering side of things, you know? West Coast Choppers, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I head up like a good amount of the motorcycle fab related things over there. Um, and just pretty much work under Jesse. It's the first like motorsports related shop I've ever worked in. This year when I did the shovel head I built for Born Free, the one that's here, I was at West Coast when I was building it, but I was doing all this from home. Like, so none of it really overlaps, none of it's even in the shop or has anything to do with it. But it was a lot different coming home and just already being ready to go. Like, it just come right into it. And the year before, I'd, there were some days I'd struggle because I was worn out from work and just kind of, all right, let me switch modes, try to get my shit together and do this. I mean, it's pretty surreal though, too, like going to working there. Like just the kind of the way it all happened and worked out, just kind of constantly feeling you walked into the wrong party and no one kicked you out. Kind of like how I feel even being at Born Free still. And then I'm back again, like I already got invited back for next year. So it's, it's wild. I don't know how it's all happening, but I just keep saying yes and just bust an ass and it works out. Uh, again, I'm Jacob Kennard from Austin, Texas. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Jacob underscore Kennard, C-O-N-A-R-D. It's not Conrad. Don't listen to what anyone says.
I'm Pablo Perez. I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and this here is my 1954 Panhead. I picked it up in Arkansas about eight months ago and bought it as a pile of parts and pretty much went to town. Uh, had a few friends help me out with paint and stuff, and then I did pretty much all the mechanical, did the motor, just got it to this, and today riding the Born Free was the longest ride it's done so far, so pretty stoked. First panhead, first bike build. Just not really knowing too much about panhead motors other than seeing them. So it was a lot of reading, a lot of talking with old mechanics and getting the knowledge and the know-how, knowing how to set, you know, clearances and stuff like that. And and it's just really, it was a, it's a challenge because I'm, I'm a Volkswagen guy by trade. I rode my buddy uh, Joey Cano's 1960 Panhead one night and from there on I was completely hooked like it was it was like I couldn't get the feeling out of my head and I said I wanted that so I pretty much sold a 63 Corvair convertible that I had and I immediately went and found this and I don't regret it one bit something about panheads they just have a sound and just like the harmonics when you're riding it down the road it just there's no other bike that has ever done that for me i can understand what people talk about when they talk about panheads and and i, I felt it you know my name is pablo perez my instagram is vintage faya it's vintage f-i-y-a My name is Nick Resty. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Man, it was actually during COVID and I had those parts. You know, I was gonna build a bike and I just kinda, I've always liked VL framed choppers and I decided to try one myself. And I had a lot of time because we were on lockdown, quarantine and just challenged myself and really got into it. You know, really got into the whole figuring this out. How does all this work? Learning why it's hard to put a, motor into a VL frame, all that, and just kind of, I don't know, kind of pushed myself out of my comfort zone. The motor mounts are not the same. The holes are off about an eighth of an inch, so you got to kind of fill up the holes and re-weld re the holes, re-drill, making sure everything's square. Obviously, you got to cut out the whole inside of the chassis to be able to fit that motor. Just shoehorning something bigger into a smaller frame, and you just got, the clearance is the issue. You know, it, I can't really, tell you exactly how to do it, you just kind of <laughs> in and out, you got to figure it out, just seeing where your clearances are, cutting stuff, and it's not something you need special tools to do. You, you just got to kind of nut up and do it. And luckily I've had, uh, I've had a couple friends that have done it before, so I was able to make some phone calls. I wanted to keep the bike as skinny as I could, and uh, you know, I've seen that done on other bikes before, and I was like, oh, I'm going to fucking try this. And you know, I'm, I'm not a good welder, I just, I can make it work, and I clean it up pretty nice, but. I was like, I, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna challenge myself. Because everything on that bike was new to me. I, I did a lot of shit I've never done before, and that was part of it. 
my buddy high school at the dojo was like, yeah, exhaust through the frame, that's fucking sick. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try it. And yeah, I just kind of sat there for a second, scratching my head, I'm like, I think I cut it here. And just flipped, flipped the pipe around, made it work. Honestly, was trying to figure out how to put a fucking big twin fork on a VL frame, uh, or VL neck, as an inch, it takes an inch and an eighth stem. Kind of a simple thing to taper down, but it wasn't really, it was easier said than done, so I just had to figure out how to make a fork work on it. And simple, but kind of a challenge. So I was like, oh fuck, I didn't think about this. The fucking brake, putting a mechanical brake on there, like a big twin brake was not an easy task. You know, you gotta, you gotta make a new brake stay. Uh, the crossover is not the same. You know, you gotta, you gotta modify all that stuff just to have simple mechanical brakes. So that was a challenge that is overlooked. You know, no one sees it, you're like, oh yeah, it's just a mechanical brake, but when you're building the bike, you're like, fuck, this is hard. <laughs> if you're building a bike, like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't look at it as hours, you know? It's, it's, I personally, I try to have fun doing this stuff. If I get frustrated, I'll put a wrench down and walk away. I'm like, that, I'm not doing, something's wrong if I'm getting frustrated. Me and my friends, the Haints especially, we, we kind of, we're open to hearing what other people had to say, listen to a lot of advice. Um, our buddy Larry Pierce, rest in peace, he taught us how to do a lot of stuff with the shop he had. Um, so we, we absorbed a lot of information. We never kind of, we're all ears to the guys that knew what they were doing and gave us advice and all that stuff. Never too cool to listen to good advice. Like I said, my name's Nick Resty. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I brought my VLFL chopper and uh, Fucking team haints, man. <laughs>
uh, cut up the cam cover, highway pegs. They're very comfortable. I get that question a lot, um, but it's very comfortable. So we do a lot of highway riding. And with the setup of my bars, and once you get your pack on, uh, pretty much just like couching it the entire way. I have learned that you don't really give an artist too much direction. And so um, I just, I found another uh, leather worker that had made a seat for some boats that were a little Western inspired and I really liked it. And so I sent, that was pretty much the only thing I sent to Kendra was the, uh, an image of that seat. And then after just seeing some of her work, I picked out some things that I liked and told her to go crazy. Really love bison and we go to Sturgis every year. And obviously they have uh, bison there in Custer State Park and sunflowers inspired from Kansas because obviously it's the sunflower state. And uh, Nicole also does like really cool snakes. And so I wanted something that kind of married Kansas and South Dakota together and so uh, went with that and told her to put one of her cool snakes in it and that's what she came up with. Amity Mar, Wichita, Kansas, uh, Amityville 626 on Instagram. When I'm not doing my day job, I am the behind the scenes for Martian Machine. It's at Martian Machine Co. on Instagram. My name is Timmy Marr, I'm from Wichita, Kansas, and I brought my 1973 shovel head in a straight leg pan head frame. Tank is molded in, fender's molded in, it's got a cool rigid front end on it. So <laughs> I thought it would be funny to have like a really, really tough chopper, but have an underlying really girly theme. So I built a clueless theme bike. But if you've never seen the movie Clueless, you might not catch that it's a Clueless theme bike. Tough old biker guys are like, whoa, cool, that's a badass bike. And then their daughters are like, oh, this bike is so cute. <laughs> There's a scene in the movie where uh, she gets bumped into by a high school boy and she goes, ugh, as if. So my license plate says as if. She's like always talking on her cell phone. So I have a cell phone shifter. I painted the bike yellow plaid like her outfit in the movie. I got a couple funny stickers here and there that are like quotes from the movie. I got into building bikes just kind of through the internet. I just followed guys on Instagram on, you know, when I was in high school and started doing it myself. Learned how to weld and fabricate like in high school. I took high school shop classes and then my brother and I would build custom bicycles when I was in high school and then it just kind of turned into a hobby, turned into a job. I went to welding school and so I weld as a profession and it's my hobby too. Martian Machine is my brother and I's company. We hand sand cast parts. My cell phone shifter is sand cast. My foot pegs are sand cast. My uh, little fork stops I made, the lipstick tubes, they're sand cast. So I usually ride like this and I just step on the chain. Or you could go up here. The kickstand, <laughs> the kickstand, uh, I needed a longer kickstand because I put this longer front end on it and I just had a chunk of stainless steel rod 
and I welded it on with the intention of cutting it down, but it worked at that length, so I just left it that long, and <laughs> it works. <laughs> My name's Timmy Marr, I'm from Wichita, Kansas, Skid Marr on Instagram, and company is Martian Machine, Instagram is Martian Machine Co. I'm from Duncanville, Texas, and I brought this 1992 Sportster Hugger. It's an 883, but it's punched out to a 1200. It's got the Hayfley Bros kit, which now is throttle addiction. Uh, everything to hold back in, uh, sissy bar, seat, oil tank, Molens narrow trees, uh, invader front wheel, stock rear wheel, tiny, tiny tank, one and a quarter, uh, hand, built these bars myself, got some little headlights, they're little moons like that go under most dynas, and so I just did doubles. It didn't even look like this the first time I did it. The first thing was to get up to Giddy Up back in 2018. The biggest thing for, for it was just to build a chopper. I had uh, done a few Harleys and I wanted to get into to building more, so I knew about them. Tore it all the way down, cut it, welded it. I have a little Everlast welder. Uh, just taught myself how to TIG weld at the house. I don't have any other fancy tools, no lathe or nothing like that. When I built the bike, I was at Texas Harley-Davidson, uh, right in service, and we had a painter up there, Chris Frazier, he's from Oklahoma, I think, just past the border. Uh, he painted it all, uh, and I, I'm not a painter, I'm not a good designer, nothing like that, so with all artists, tattoo artists, paint artists, I tell them, I give them free reign. It is a 92, so that's when I was born, and my birth, I was born in January, so my uh, first stone is garnet, so I wanted to go red. So I said red, and uh, you know I told them I wanted like panel stuff, chopper kind of stuff, flake. I got fish scales underneath and lace on the top. I got sleepy on here, because people used to call me that. Uh, and then I got a little insignia down there. Uh, BYSC, birth year sportster crew, fuck yuppies. Aiden De La Rosa, Duncanville, Texas. You can find me on the gram at Aid Lemaine. It's like Charlemagne, but with AID in front instead.
name is Jared Weems from Tampa, Florida, and I brought this 1956 Triumph drag bike. The bike is an alcohol fueled, mechanically fuel injected, supercharged 1956 Triumph uh, based on drag bikes from the late 60s, early 70s. Um, kind of the history behind the bike. Uh, grow up, my dad loved Triumphs, and the very first motorcycle I ever touched was my dad's 49 Triumph. And uh, when I got the invitation to build a bike for Born Free 13, I said, you know what? I got this old 1956 motor and transmission kicking around. And my dad was born in 56, so and he was a drag racer. So I said, let's throw that all together and build something ridiculous for Born Free. And uh, this is what we came up with. Uh, it's pretty exciting to do it, be a part of it. We ended up taking home best competition at Born Free 13. So essentially the only thing left factory or stock on this bike is the under cradle of the engine, the two frame rails that run underneath. Um, custom built the frame. Uh, the neck has been pushed out five inches, dropped two and a half at the neck. Uh, still has a pretty stock degree rack, like right at 27 and a half degrees rake. The backbone of the bike is the oil tank. If you notice in the back of the bike, there are no shocks, no struts. It looks like the swing arm is just kind of hanging out in the air. Up underneath the bike is some hidden heim joints, so I still have adjustable ride height, which is what you need for the drag strip to be able to adjustments. Outside of that, extensive motor work. I ended up taking 30 pounds just out of the engine. Um, the bike was originally a 1956 Thunderbird, which would have a cast iron cylinder, cast iron head. Removed all that heavy cast iron stuff, put a, a 750 big bore kit on there and then shaved all of the fins off the motor because the bike runs on alcohol. You really don't have to worry too much about the cooling. Exposed push rods, exposed valve train. Um, I really like the idea of the cutaway engines that you see from you know, the 30s and 40s. On the bottom end to kind of bring that same idea, I machined the cover of the timing cover out so you can actually see inside there, see the oil pump working, all of the gears for the timing. And that was a big process trying to mold that <laughs> and then to make sure that it's heat resistant and everything. But I would say I'm a designer, number one. I, I can look at something and see the lines that it needs. Uh, so that's priority one for me. When I look at anybody's motorcycle, I get the overall concept. And then I get like super into the details. Like I wanna see those crazy little fabrication details. Um, I was a machinist by trade, so I have the skill set to do those things. You come to a show like this, man, every motorcycle that's sitting on this field in any other environment would be a first place win. And all of a sudden you put everybody in the same pool and you say pick the best ones out of the best ones and man it's 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 tough so once again my name is jared williams from tampa florida i build triumphs i was born free 13 invited builder you can find me on instagram at weemsmotorco.tampa my website is weemsmotorco.com i also check me out on youtube at weemsmotorco Weston Barnes, uh, Austin, Texas. Originally from Port Arthur, Texas, Southeast Texas. This is a 72 shovelhead motor sitting in a 65 frame. Old Denver's hardtail, 69 hydroglide front end. Uh, put it together over the last year and a half. Uh, garage build, kind of first one to build on my own. Um, Josh Trevino out of Austin, Texas did the paint work for me and everything, knocked it out the park. Um, been a solid runner so far. Still going through the hiccups a little bit, but solid, man. My dad, growing up, um, 
was a bike uh, builder painter out of Port Arthur and painted a bunch of rad bikes and everything. And uh, one I always liked was one that was pretty similar to this, white frame, fucking uh, candy red with a little bit of gold and stuff. So. Um, I have a metal fabrication company out of Austin. Uh, so this is what, I don't do this for a living, but it's just a hobby. Um, yeah, you turn your hobby into a living, you'll hate it. So try to keep it that. Weston Barnes out of Fort Arthur, Texas. Uh, uh, FT Weston. Arizona and today I brought my 92 Harley Davidson Sportster with Throttle Addictions Hardtail Kit as well as I'm vending uh, custom upholstery. It was originally an 8A3 and it's been converted to a 1200 um, custom bars from the Hayfley Brothers. Like I said the Throttle Addiction Hardtail Kit which includes the oil bag and the custom king and queen seat which I obviously did the upholstery on. I wanted something different when I went down to EDR. So I chose this crazy, I don't know, diamond snowflake pattern that I kind of regretted after eight hours of sewing. This was painted by Doug Hayfley, uh, who is my boyfriend's brother at Hayfley Brothers. So it's, yeah, it's a custom paint job by him. I love it. Uh, I wouldn't want any other bike. I grew up sewing uh, from a small child and it's always just kind of been a hobby of mine and a side hustle and just recently I decided to kind of give it a go. I knew people that were looking um, for upholstery and I like to take on challenges so I'm just slowly growing my business. I do uh, not only motorcycle seats but hot rods, all of Thrall Addiction's seat covers for their seats while they wrap them, um, as, I guess as well as doing custom seat orders when people send me seat pans. Uh, Sally Hardigan I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. You can find my personal Instagram at Just Falcon Around, or if you want to look at my business it's Hayfley Seats. <laughs>